Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Paris. And um, I'm about to get on a train um, to Lyon. Um, so I've just got a little bit of time to reflect on, on last night. And I thought that's exactly what I would do right now in this video. Um, one of the most amazing rugby experiences I've ever had. In fact, it might even be the most amazing. Um, Ireland versus South Africa. Um, yeah. So if you haven't already, please hit subscribe on the channel, hit like and, and leave your comments on this then. I just, um, I think you probably got, if you watched the video last night um, I put up, I think you probably got that um, I was kind of blown away by, by that occasion. And I don't think I was nearly alone, actually. In fact, I am um, speaking to some Island fans last night. And I said to them, what was that like as an occasion, and as atmosphere? What was that like compared to France? Ireland against France in the Six Nations back in February and they they said to a man that was that was better that was that was more amazing so I'm just trying to level this up um, and then I asked the same question to South African fans who were in Paris for that game last November was it between France and South Africa and they said the same said that was more intense and both of those games are up there with the very best games of rugby I've ever seen and, and I think last night surpassed it the sheer intensity of the play. And I think well, I think one of the phrases I said on the video yesterday, which I think is, well, if I do say so myself, I think is on the money, is that tiny moments, what would be in other games, small moments, a scrum, a line out, um, one breakdown, a, a one tackle. Some of those small moments felt like they could be game defining. Such were the margins so small between the two teams. That was proper elite sport. And um, yeah, it, worthy of a final and the atmosphere, I cannot, cannot get over that atmosphere last night. It was amazing. Yeah, I feel very, very lucky to have been there. And it's going to be hard for any final, even if it's, even if it's Ireland against South Africa again in the final, it's going to be very hard for, for any final to, uh, to live up to that. But the, the, the two quarterfinals that are going to happen in that same stadium between probably, as it looks like now, South Africa and New Zealand, uh, sorry, South Africa and France and Ireland and New Zealand. My goodness me, they look good, don't they? They just look like they're gonna be absolute crackers. Oh yeah, there's one thing, I, I, in the sort of adrenaline and everything with last night, I, I, I couldn't really form sentences. <laughs> I tried, but I've had a bit of time to think about it. And one of the things that I wanted to make sure I mentioned was a reminder of just how powerful rugby is as a sport and these two countries exemplify that because you have the the South Africa you know the coming together rainbow nation and and all of that you've got the the anthem in two languages and last night the Irish team walked out with two flags the flag for the Republic of Ireland and the the flag for Ulster which I don't think that's normal and I don't think actually it's meant to happen because they're very much big on the whole, we are one island, we're not, they, 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 we are all island. But deliberate or not, it doesn't matter. It was just a reminder, just a reminder in that few minutes when they were standing there, the Irish anthem, which is a uniting whole, all island anthem, and, and then the anthem for South Africa, a uniting all South Africa anthem. It's just like, it, rugby is amazing, isn't it? It's just really, really powerful. Um, the, the other thing that I was really struck by just this morning, I'm in a coffee and, and kind of, you know, going through some of the comments uh, on, on last night's video was how brilliant a little um, community we've got here, which I, I don't take for granted either uh, because the, the comments are so respectful. Irish fans enjoying the win, but, you know, saying what a team South Africa are and they're going to get better and we're going to have to be even better to beat them. And South Africa fans, you know, um, disappointed with the defeat but saying fair play island what what a great team they are and it's just it's noticeable when you go elsewhere on online it's not always like that so i i love what we what we've got here as rugby fans and um i, I really appreciate you um like i say supporting the channel uh, also there was one comment which i thought absolutely nailed it um who said, and I, I can't remember the name of the person that commented, so I apologise to that person, but I think in, in any case, they were just relaying a quote that their dad said to them. They said that rugby at the minute is like that period where you had Nadal, Federer and Djokovic 
all at the top of their game in tennis when you look at Ireland, South Africa and France. New Zealand are not far off, mind you, but those three, those three are uh, amazing rugby teams. And I do, I do think South Africa are better now than they were in 2019. I think they will be better in games ahead than they were last night. But they are, they are, I think they're a better team um, than they were. Ireland obviously have come on an incredible amount. And, you know, when you've had your fun with, with, with Andy Farrell, can we have him back, please? So I can't believe, when I look at the England 2015 coaching team, Sean Edwards now with France. Oh, no, no, he was with Wales. Sorry. Andy Farrell, head coach of Ireland. Mike Cat, attack coach of Ireland. He's crafted the, the best attack in world rugby. Graham Rowntree, head coach at Munster. Stuart Lancaster was one of the key cogs in a, in a brilliant Leinster production line. Just we had it as England, we had it right there. And we just, we let it go because we lost a couple of games. So uh, yeah, fair play. So oh, can we have him back? Um, let's talk about um, a couple of specifics then. The, the seven ones, no, Monsieur. Um, can we talk about the seven one split? Um, did it backfire? Did it backfire? I think too much was made of it before the game. I think actually the, the replacements for South Africa, the forward replacements, did their job. Because we saw you saw the impact that Ox and Che had when he came on and Trevor Neocane after that. Just they obliterated the Irish scrum. So they kind of did their job and Quagga Smith and Marco Van Staden just absolutely attacked the breakdown when they came on and, and that, that paid dividends. So I think it did its job. I guess the seven rather than the six two just meant you they didn't allow themselves that little extra bit of flexibility and what you would have given for Hondre Pollard to have been on the bench last night, just to come on and, you know, take it home. Uh, that, that's obviously one of the big stories people are going to talk about. Um, Marnie Libok is, is going to be feeling that today, isn't he? I think Ronan Kelleher for, for Ireland is going to be feeling it with how bad their line-out were. And I think those are the two areas where both teams can and will improve. And I think they're probably equivalent. I think actually on the night they sort of cancel each other out. It's easy to say... South Africa missed 11 kickable points, which is true, which is very true. But those six, seven, eight line out, however many it was in the end that Ireland completely lost, that has a massive bearing on how a game goes in international rugby, a launch pad for attacking play. And when, when Ireland did win their attacks, uh, their line outs, their attack from it was outstanding. So I actually think those, they cancel each other out, especially when you remember that I'm just, it was the case, wasn't it, that South Africa's try came immediately after Fafta Clerk's long kick that hit the, hit the post. I think I'm right in that in saying that. So I don't think it was really 11 points. The, the missed three led to five. So you could argue it was a net gain of two points and therefore you actually only left uh, six points out on the field, potentially, or eight. Anyway, enough to have won the game, I, I admit, but equally, Ireland's lineout will get better too. So, yes, uh, it's good. Uh, it's good that, that to think that if they do meet again, it will be in a final if they meet again, and that the game could be even higher quality. Bundyaki versus Damian Dialande. The, oh my goodness, that was worth the money alone. Just watching that match up, it was like two. It was like two prize heavyweights going at it the whole game. That goal line tackle from Bundyaki. Who isn't he? I've been saying this the last couple of weeks. He, he's the, if you're picking a player of the tournament right now, it's Bundyaki. Three games in and there is nobody playing better rugby than him. Damien Dialande was good last night. And that, that match-up was absolutely brilliant. It's all, ki all kicking off here. Um, but yeah, and then there were, other, there were other big, big moments, weren't there? James Lowe, that tackle on Eben Etzebeth. I, I don't think I've ever seen that. That would have been a humbling experience for Eben Etzebeth, who was just giant, ruined Ireland's line-out. Um, yeah, some people have sort of talked about Ben O'Keefe, the referee, some sort of, sort of South African, some of the decisions they weren't too happy with. I'm going to disagree with that. I'm going to disagree with that. I and Razi Erasmus also um, emphasised that it, I think what did Razi Erasmus say in the press conference afterwards? He said it was brilliant to have a game where, with no big incidents with the referee and the referee not getting too involved in the game. There were no yellow cards, there were no red cards, and that's to massive credit to the players because it was absolutely brutal. 
the physicality and the bravery of that match was off the charts. For there to be no yellow cards, no red cards, it is incredible of those players, the discipline, whilst being just monstrously brutal in the best possible way. It was amazing. But I think I actually think Ben O'Keefe did a really good job at you know, letting the game be the centrepiece. There was very few TMO interventions, very few stop downs for pernickety decisions. And you might, you might disagree with one decision here, one decision there, but I think on balance, it, the, 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 these things even themselves out. And I think when a game is as good as it is, you have to credit the referee. I don't think it's, a, it's not a coincidence. Game, ref, when, when games are great, referees play a part in the game being great. So I'm going to credit um, ben O'Keefe. I thought he was great. I talked on the on the little preview video I did yesterday when I was at in Leon train station, just excited about the game about Johnny Sexton taking it right to the line against the South African defence. This South African defence is incredible. It was the best attack in the world against the best defence. You, what you got to remember about South Africa's defence: they let Scotland score three points, and the best attack in the world, they only conceded one try. South Africa's defence is legit. It is seriously good. Um, the bravery of Johnny Sexton just astounds me. He got absolutely hammered a bunch of times. He, had, he went off like a half-broken man because he takes it right to the line. He gets right up in the face of Damien Dialende and, and confronts it in order to get set players like Bundiaki free. It was um, fantastic to watch. And... and um, <laughs> I mentioned it on a previous video. Um, it was at one of the World Cup warm-up games. I can't remember when, but the playing of Zombie by the Cranberries might have been in the first World Cup game, actually. Um, a, very much a monster thing, something I associate with Thoman Park, but um, because it's become a bit sort of adopted as a, a as the, this Irish team's song. The atmosphere in that stadium when that song was playing was incredible. As was that there was a little stop down. I think there might have been an injury. The fields of Athen Rye on about 65, 70 minutes. I, I actually just genuinely goosebumps just thinking about it the day after. It was incredible. And as I say that, there's a bunch of, yeah, there's some uh, people with, with, with Irish tops and South African tops who are just um, arriving through the train station, which is where I'm going to go now to go and watch Australia against Wales. Thank you again um, for your support on the channel. So I don't know why I whacked that. Um, order. Um, and that is that is it for me on this one. Hit subscribe, hit like, give it the thumbs up. That really helps. And um, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks again.